Welcome to worship, everyone. Wherever you are and whoever you are, it is fabulous that you can join us in this time. You know, one of the things that we've done in the past here at Terrigal Uniting Church is we've come up to the Bush Chapel the Sunday after Christmas and the Sunday after Easter. We haven't done it for a few years for a number of different reasons, bad weather and a couple of other problems, but it's something that I love to do. This year we have been blessed with magnificent weather after Easter Sunday throughout this week. And so we wanted to lead worship from the Bush Chapel up here for this Sunday. We're recording a little bit earlier in the week. Worship up here is a great way to express a part of our response for the joy and the new life and the wonderful expression of the Easter story. Just before I started recording worship today, I went down and we've got a bush tucker garden over there and we've got some finger limes that are almost ready to pick from some of our bush tucker foods. It's a great place to see that new life and that fresh expression of God's beautiful world. So, may each of us in this time of worship delight in the gifts that God has offered us for the light and life that God gives us. May this worship be a response to the power of Easter Sunday. And may we rejoice in it this time as we have right throughout the week. So we light the candle. We light the candle to remind us that Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is with us here in this time, here in this place, and with you wherever you are. Let's pray. Oh, and I probably should say before you bow your head and close your eyes kind of stuff, for this Sunday's worship, one of the things we ask people to do on Easter Sunday was to send in some pictures of new life and hope and love that they had around their place. And so, we're going to, rather than you closing your eyes during this time of prayer, we're going to invite you to just look at the screen because we're going to put up some of those images of new life and hope that were a part of our Easter Sunday service that people took. So, let's pray. Great God, last Sunday we celebrated the resurrection of Christ risen from the grave, conquering death for us. We praise you that this celebration is not a one-off event, that the joy of Easter is celebrated every Sunday, that the life Jesus Christ offers us is life eternal, and that we can embrace that now and always. We praise you for this day. We stand in the world that you have made, we can embrace the fullness of your love and we can look at your creation, the things that you have made for us to delight in. Great and wonderful God, your power and creativity is on display for us all in this world. For you offer us this and so much more. And in this time, we give you thanks. In this time, we give you praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing our first song together. Open the eyes of my heart. We have this beautiful bush setting into worship and praise God in today. And it's wonderful to be here. And we brought you a, a few songs um, that we're going to do a little bit more acoustically than usual. But we'd still love you to sing along at home and really join in with us in this worship space. Our first song is going to be Open the Eyes of Our Heart, of My Heart, Your Heart. And we just pray that it will be a time that you can connect with God and ask God to show you um, what God wants you to, to look for and to see in this service and in this week ahead. So let's sing together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. 
There's a couple of things to celebrate in the community of our church as well. One is, Carmen Daniels, after finishing a double degree, Thank you. you are welcome, <laughs> has graduated from uni. It is fantastic. She's here to do a Bible reading as well and sing. Um, also, Annalise Gallon also had her birthday in the last week. Peter and Irene Wilkins sent a couple of things in and one was that they've been a part of our church community for five years. And it's great to have them a part of our faith community. Another fantastic and really important thing, Suzanne and I got married 25 years ago. I'm going to eat that later. Laurie Reed, a member of our congregation, he was the minister that married the two of us. So, um, thank you Laurie, that was really good. And it's wonderful for me that I'm actually now the minister of the bloke that was my minister at the time of my wedding. We also have Virginia Lumney. She was, she had her birthday on Easter Sunday. And Eloise Davison turned three this week. And also, I feel like it's the star on the top of the Christmas tree. Lucy Mavis Brewster was born to Pip and Trent this week. So that is an absolute gift. Congratulations. Let's pray. Wonderful God, we want to give you thanks and praise for those moments of joy and those special markers in life. For Carmen and her education. For birthdays. For church community. For wedding anniversaries. 
and for the gift of a child. We thank you for Lucy Mavis Brewster. And God, with all of these things, they are a great way for us to be reminded of the beauty and the joy and the special new life that we celebrate in the resurrection of Christ. Wonderful God, we give you thanks for each of these moments. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to have our kids' song now, and then Craig and Emma are going to spend some time with us. So I need everybody standing up. Get your mums and dads to stand up with you. I heard last week a few dads did some good actions with me. But today we're not going to be doing running or things like that that we did last week. What we're going to do is we're going to go fishing. Now I know a lot of you think that you're pretty good fishermen. I know Richard thinks he's a pretty good fisherman. But firstly, to go fishing today, we're going to go out in a boat. So firstly, you need to climb into your boat, maybe sit down and then grab the oar and start rowing out, out into the ocean. And then your boat might have a sail. So you might have to put the sail up and then you're sailing along. You don't have to row now. And then when you get to a good fishing spot, we don't have rods we're going to use for fishing today. We're going to have a net. So quickly let the sail down, grab that net. It's really heavy. Show me your muscles. Okay. And then ready, one, two, three, throw that net out. All right. When the net hits the water, are you looking around watching the net hit the water? Okay. We need to pull the net in. You're going to have to have big, strong muscles for this. Ready? Pulling the net in, pull it in, pull it in. <gasps> I caught a fish. How many fish did you catch? Did you catch more than me? Well, Emma's going to tell us a story today about a fisherman that caught more than one fish, even caught more fish than Richard catches. And so we're going to listen to a story with Emma and thank you for helping me. Thanks, Greg. Today's story is called, 
Peter and the big breakfast. Peter sat on the beach and watched the sunset. He thought about how he had run away and left his friend Jesus. Peter felt ashamed. He thought about the cross and felt sad. He thought about the empty tomb and felt confused. I may be an, I may be an ashamed, sad, confused chicken, said Peter, but I am still a fisherman. So Peter gathered his friends, climbed into the boat and headed out to sea. Into the deep he threw the nets and waited and waited and waited. There were no nibbles, not even a nudge of the nets. Peter slowly rowed back to the beach. That morning, as the sun rose, a lone fisherman stood on the beach and cast his net. The fisherman dragged his catch ashore. He collected driftwood, sparked his flint and warmed himself by the fire. He cleaned the fish and cooked his catch. The lone fisherman stood on the beach and watched a boat row back to shore. Friends, yelled the fisherman, throw your nets on the right hand side. Into the deep through the nets and fish not just 10 not 100 but 153 enormous fish it's Jesus yelled John it's the Lord Peter dived into the sea and swam to the beach bring your fish said Jesus let's have some breakfast After breakfast, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me more than they do? Yes, Lord, replied Peter. You know I'm your friend. Jesus said, Peter, feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, said Peter. You know I'm your friend. Jesus replied, Look after my sheep. Then Jesus asked a third time, Peter, are you my friend? Yes, Lord, you know my heart. You know I'm your friend. Peter said to Jesus, Peter said Jesus, feed my sheep. When you were young, you'd get all dressed up and go where you pleased. But when you get old, someone else will dress you up and drag you where you don't want to go. Follow me. But Jesus said, Peter, what about John? Don't worry about John, Peter, my friend. You follow me. And so Peter the fisherman, who still felt a bit chicken, stepped forward and again he followed his friend Jesus. You'll notice in that story that Jesus never gives up on Peter, it, just like he'll never give up on you. I think it'll be fun to try and be a fisherman just like Peter. So this weekend's craft is a craft that you need some help from an adult with. You are going to make your very own fish trap out of an old water bottle. Ours looks a bit dirty because we had to test it out. All the instructions are on our webpage and you pop a little bread in, tie it to a stick, and throw it out into some waterway near you. And hopefully you might catch some fish just like Peter and the fishermen did. Better than me at fishing. That's a big call. I caught 15 fish on Tuesday. Not the 153 like we're in that net, but I was still pretty happy. Which probably reminds me that I should lead a prayer of confession, probably for pride and arrogance more than anything. One of the things we did on Good Friday is we invited people to consider where they were in the Easter story, where they would put themselves. We're going to have a couple of those images up as we go through this time of confession. So, let's pray. Wonderful God, 
The story of Easter just brings us joy. However, that radiance of Jesus Christ, the way that Christ shines through that story, can show us the places that we don't shine. As we look at ourselves, we come to you in confession. For the things we say or the things we do that do not shine in our life, that do not shine the light of Jesus Christ into this world, wonderful God, we are sorry. For the moments we bring the Good Friday story to life, because of what we say or what we do, great God, we are sorry. For the moments we pull away from your saving love, Jesus Christ, we are sorry. Call us back to you, Christ our Saviour. Call us back to you, Christ our Lord. Again and again and again and again. Call us back to you so that we can live in your glory. And together let us pray the prayer that Christ our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. You know, the good news of the Easter story is that we are forgiven. That we are set free. And if we confess our sins to God, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins. So I declare to you, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let's sing our next song together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
Bible reading comes from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the first book, Theopolis, I wrote, about the, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taking, taken up from you into heaven, will come down in the same way as you saw him going to heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mountain called, called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, son, uh, James the son of Abaphus, Simon the Zealot and Judas the son of James. All of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Dear Theophilus, I love that Luke and Acts are written to, to a person. Dear Theophilus, dear learner. Luke and Acts are actually two-part volumes. And today's reading, we've finally moved on from the Gospel of Mark that we have been looking at since Christmas. And we've started into the book of Acts. But you know, to start today's sermon, I actually want to tell you a story about Christmas more than about Easter. When I was younger, about every three years, we would have Christmas at our house. And you know, we'd have mum's side of the family for lunch and then dad's side of the family for dinner. And can I say, mum's side of the family is not small. We used to have people through the house the whole day. And it was a fabulous experience being a kid, having just a whole day party at Christmas Day. But the next day, you would get up and you'd feel a bit weird. You know, the experience of getting up the day after a big party. You'd probably go out and you'd see a few soggy deflated balloons There'd be a bit of cake that is no longer at its prime. And there's possibly enough glazed ham to feed your family for the next six weeks. The day after a big party is an interesting feeling. One of the reasons that I love coming up to the Bush Chapel, the Sunday after Easter and the Sunday after Christmas, 
is because sometimes going back into the church the Sunday after Christmas or Easter is a bit like going back into a room after a big party. All of the trappings of Easter are there, the signs of the party, but normal life is starting to return. In today's reading, we find the apostles in just that place. Easter is over. You know, Jesus has died, he has risen again, and the disciples have met the resurrected Christ. They have eaten with him. They have listened to his teaching. They have seen him talk to crowds. They have experienced life with Jesus in the resurrected Christ. They are absolutely confident in the resurrection. They know that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. They have lived with him. They have seen him now ascend into heaven to be with the Father. And they have been promised the gift and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But for now, in the reading, we see that they are told to go back to Jerusalem and wait. Back to Jerusalem and wait. I wonder what the disciples were thinking and feeling as they walked back from Jeru- back towards Jerusalem, as they walked back from the ascension where they saw Christ ascending up into heaven. I wonder if they were excited and exhilarated about the power of God and all that they had seen. I wonder if they were eager, filled with anticipation and enthusiasm. Or I wonder if they were just crippled with fear, not knowing what the next step would be. If the truth be known, they were probably vacillating wildly between one and the other. Fear and excitement all at once. Jesus was gone. The safety net that they had walked with and discovered and been taught by. Jesus left them and said that the Spirit will come and will empower them. The disciples knew the mission that they were to go out and do. Jesus has actually told them what he wants them to do. They are to go out into Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the known world. They are to be people who are to bear witness to Jesus Christ. It's like these concentric circles going to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and all of the known world to share this good news of Jesus Christ. But right now, right now they are asked to wait. It's a bit like sitting in the hall after a party, looking at the soggy balloons, waiting for the Spirit to come, waiting for the Spirit to empower them. At this moment in Australia, that feeling of confused waiting seems to fit so well with where we are. You know, the last two or three years, we have had a great life. When we were in the middle of it, we didn't realise how great the life was. But right now, we're waiting for a treatment for this disease. We're waiting for a vaccination to come to allow us back into life. For the church at this moment, there is this sense of confused waiting as well. Because our normal way of being church is to gather together, to run programs and groups where we come together, to draw ourselves together in Christian community. That's normally what we do in worship. We gather in a place together. In the book of Acts here, the disciples are sitting in a room after the big party and they're waiting for the next set. For us at the church, we could be hoping to return to the good old days, that everything will go back to normal. And you know, some of that will happen. As time goes by, some of that is going to happen. But if the truth be known, we're not going to be exactly the same as we were at the other end of this. Our world has changed. The world will be different in some kind of way. 
even if this all ended tomorrow and it won't the world would be a little bit different and we've got to get used to the new world and we don't know what that will be things will change whether it just be a little bit or whether it will be a little bit more than that God is the only one who knows and only time will tell what it will be but back to the scripture passage the disciples here have gone through Easter and as a result of Easter everything has changed for them they will never be the same they have a new mission a new orientation a new goal they were fishermen they were tax collectors they were normal people who have now been given an extraordinary task they have been told that they are to go out into the known world and to bear witness to Jesus Christ but right now they are waiting for the empowerment to do so is there much different for us as the church we sit in the room after the party the party of the last few years the, la the party of really the last so many years but we know our task for our task is exactly the same task that the disciples were given that commissioning wasn't just to that group of 12 people or that group of 11 that commissioning is for us all to bear witness to Jesus Christ in our community, in our region, in our country, to the known world. Yet like the disciples who sit in the absolute shock of Easter and the ascension of Jesus Christ and they just don't quite know what to do. We sit in the shock of a shutdown, working out how to be church in this new world, how to be Christian, how to be a follower of Jesus Christ in this new environment where we may not be able to gather in the same way. But if you look at this passage, what do the disciples do at this point in time? What do the disciples do in this period of waiting? while they wait for the Spirit's empowerment for them to go into their mission and their task. What do they do? They dedicate themselves to prayer, calling on God to empower them for the task that they are to perform. We need to do the same. We need to pray. To cultivate that rich prayer life to build that spiritual foundation till we know what we are to do next. To discern what God wants us to do. We are not just to stop and sit and do nothing. For we have a call from Christ. For the Spirit of God will empower us to do the mission that God calls us to do. In the same way that the disciples waited for the Spirit to empower them to do the mission that they were called to do, we are to do the same. Spend time in prayer and preparation to do the mission that Christ calls us to do. But even though we sit in some kind of waiting at this time, there is still the clear mission that we are called to do. And you know, even in this situation, we can still bear witness to Jesus Christ. One of the things that has surprised me about this situation that we find ourselves in right now is that, you know, there is no better time to invite someone to church. There is absolutely no better time to invite someone to church because right now you can do it without having to step through the doors of a building. And one of the most terrifying things for someone to step into church for the first time is to actually step through the doors to walk into that community you can invite someone to come along and join us in worship 
Send them the link and suggest that they participate in church. Send them a link and invite them to join us in worship. To see what church is like. It's a pretty safe way to check out what these people are like and what worship is like. I remember almost 30 years ago, I was talking to a bloke who came to faith by checking out a Bible study group without anyone knowing that he was doing it. It was when I was training to be a youth worker in Tassie and I was talking to this bloke who just after he had retired, he started to live at home when he was normally going out to work and his wife every Tuesday had a Bible study. So he would go out, you know, when, they, when everyone came in, he'd say hello to him and he'd walk down into his garage and he'd do some work in his garage. So every Tuesday he would hear the murmurings of the Bible study that his wife was a part of upstairs. He got more and more and more intrigued until one day he actually crawled up under the house in the space between the floorboards and the dirt, laying on his back with the floorboards just above his face. He would listen to that Bible study. And for a year and a half, Every Tuesday, he would do the same ritual of going downstairs to work in the garage and he would shuffle up under the house and listen to the Bible study. Eventually, he came to faith. He came to believe in Jesus Christ for himself. And eventually, he used to sit up in that Bible study and participate. And I think for him, one of the other benefits was that he got to have morning tea with the rest of the group. At this point in time, you don't need to lie on the dirt to check out church anonymously. You can come along. You can follow the link and participate for yourself. And you know, if you are someone that is doing that at this point in time, checking out church and you want to ask a question, we've put a place on our website where you can ask any question you want about faith and God and Jesus and the scriptures, about how to live out this relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you are someone that wants to ask one of those questions, go to our website and you can ask a question for us. Today, we sit in a strange place. We sit in this spot where it's a bit like just after the party with the soggy balloons, the bit of old cake and the glazed ham for the next six weeks waiting for the next step waiting for God's guidance waiting for the call of God's spirit to touch us and to show us how we live out this mission because our mission is as the church to bear witness to Jesus Christ in our community in our region, in our country, to the known world. We have never done God's mission in this environment before. But that doesn't mean it can't be done. And that doesn't mean that we should not do it. Let us pray that God will guide us on how to do God's mission in the world that we step into. Because those disciples, even though they walked back and they waited, Christ had not left them at the ascension. For the empowerment of the Spirit meant that Christ was with them wherever they went and whatever they did. And that is the same for us. Christ does not leave us, but Christ empowers us and calls us into his mission in the world. Amen. Almighty God, we come to you as our creator, our sustainer and our redeemer with our prayers for other people and for ourselves. We pray, Lord, that in this time of uncertainty and waiting, we hold on to your promises. We hold on to your promise that one day all will be good, all will be wonderful, there will be no more illness or pain or suffering. 
We pray, Lord, for the world around us. We pray for the miracle of creation, and we pray for you to sustain that and to repair the damage that we have done. We pray, too, for the people who are in situations where the coronavirus pandemic is the least of their worries. People who struggle from day to day with famine, with waterborne disease, with infant mortality, with poverty, Lord. We acknowledge that a lot of the problem that we have with the pandemic is that it's uh, very much a rich person's disease in the sense that we are suffering from it and it's not out of our sight as so many illnesses are. So we pray, Lord, for those people in those situations. We pray too for our local community. We pray for an involvement, a continued involvement, despite not being able to worship together. We pray that not only is this worship seen a long way away and in many places, but we pray that we can interact with people that we know and that we can telephone or we can contact online to reassure them that they're not alone and they're not locked down in isolation. We pray too for our local community. People are struggling. People are wondering where they're going after this is all over. Will things be the same? Will they have a job? And we pray, Lord, for those people who are currently out of work. We pray for Australia. Australia doesn't seem to have been as badly hit as some places and we are grateful to you, Lord, for that. But we pray too for those parts of Australia that we don't often hear about, the remote indigenous communities where the uh, fear of illness is very much greater. And Lord, we offer you all of these prayers in Jesus' name, our Saviour. Amen. So each of us, we give to God in so many different ways. For some of you, give to your local community, your local church. For those that are a part of our community, we thank you for the offerings and donations that you have been giving. And there is on our website a donation point where you can give your offering for God's work in this world. Let us pray. Wonderful God, take our offerings and take our lives that we may serve you. That we may spread the good news of Christ, that we may bear witness to Christ. Where we are and throughout the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone, we're going to have a brief time of personal prayer and reflection. A chance for you to spend a bit of time in prayer. our last song there's a couple of things that I want to remind you about one is that if you want to have a bit of a conversation whether you're a part of the Terrigal congregation or you're someone else that's joining us at this point in time at the end of our service each week at 10 30 and at six o'clock in the evening we have a zoom conversation where you can ask a couple of questions for of me of what I've talked about in the service or we can have a bit of a chat 
just about how things are going for us. So you are welcome to join us in that 10.30 or that 6 o'clock Zoom chat. And also on Wednesday, Wednesday's Friends Day, so 2 o'clock on a Wednesday, we also have a um, Zoom conversation for anyone that wants to join in. If you go to our website, you can see the links to those Zoom conversations. If you're feeling a bit lonely and you want to talk with some people, we would love you to join us. We have this beautiful worship setting here. And if you wanted to get out during the week and on your daily exercise walk and come up here and sit by yourself and spend some time with God, you are more than welcome to. It's at the top of our property uh, at Terrible Uniting Church. So we're going to sing our final worship song now about our God who is a good, good Father and who loves us so dearly. Let's sing together. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love, the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I never ever.
So we are called to bear witness to Jesus Christ in our community, in our region, in our country, and to, to all of the known world. So let us finish this time of worship and remember that we pray and wait for the empowerment of the Spirit to do the mission of God. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.